Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The final match of the day, the ace match for this series. The last one in the Summit 2 by G2A.com European Qualifier. Team Lions versus BBC. It's all on the table. This is make it or break it, do or die. Winner advances into the main event, and the loser will walk away with absolutely nothing except a few more games of Dota and a few hours of fun under their belt. Let's see what these teams are cooking up in here. Oh boy, we've got Razor, uh, Skywrath Mage from BBC out of the gate, and Lions, they'll go back to what they know, the Faceless Void and He's the Marana. I think it's a pretty safe assumption that my nuts will be the one playing the Marana. That's the hero he's been on quite a bit this tour. And uh, not too surprised here. We saw Era play the position one Vengeful Spirit in uh, the opening match today of this best of three series. And I wonder if he'll do it again, if they're going to one-trick pony this B, or if they're going to switch it up. Maybe they'll do something a little different and uh, just put the Vengeful Spirit in more of a farming role and try and catch him off guard a little bit with their trickery. They will ban out the Meepo with their first ban, first order business, and I think that makes a lot of sense. W33 did some serious work last game. I don't know if it's safe to say he single-handedly carried it, but uh, by the end of that game, the Meepo was by far the biggest one on the field, and they really had no response for it. No easy way to deal with it, and um, I think it's a smart ban here. Now, Invoker is the other one. We saw Invoker banned out in game one. He was Ten not banned in game two. Me. That's one of the other big W33 heroes. And uh, Lions may want to consider dropping a fifth ban on him because they could still use uh, a mid hero. Um, you time. could off lane the Slark, put the Razor in a safe lane, uh, put the Invoker mid, or vice versa, put the uh, Invoker safe lane and throw the Razor mid. But the fact of the matter is, they do need another core. And uh, W33 Invoker could be um, could be some scary stuff. So Lions going to think about this third pick uh, for a little while here. In the first game, they had a very similar draft to this, where they did the Marana, Vengeful Spirit, kind of killer tri-lane, and it was, uh, it was it was pretty damn scary. Uh, I'm trying to remember who their third was in that game Radiant where they were killing all those heroes. Uh, but anyway, they've got the Invoker. They'll pick it up themselves, so no need to ban it out. Uh, they will play one of their own. I'm um, wondering who their Invoker player is or exactly how they'll set up these lanes. Uh, last time it was Jonas on the offlane Void, seconds, uh, which put Arrow really? on the position 1 Venge, Minots on the Marana, which would leave either Five Mini or Quix remaining. for the Invoker. Quix has been playing mid for him in the place of Relo, so I would imagine Reserve that's the Quix tile. pickup. And curious how his Invoker Dire will look. Ban. BBC take out the Brewmaster with their final ban. And that was a good one. Um, I guess they're thinking that Lions could have prioritized uh, his... Okay, they could have put Invoker safe line. Yeah, it could have worked out. That's pretty. Actually, there's some pretty scary kill potential there with the Magic Ten Missile, seconds, Arrow, and uh, just Invoker in general. Five seconds Oof. remaining. Now we'll be a little patient here and see what they want to do. Reserve time. So, um, hmm, who would be a good last ban for Lions here? It looks like that Wraith King will probably be a support. The Wraith King Skyrath is a really strong roaming duo, uh, and they'll want to take out another core, probably an offlane here. I would consider they've already banned out the Centaur. The Tide seems like a, pr a fairly likely team. choice, but uh, Bat Rider, he's right up there too. That was going to be one of the next few heroes on my list. So a smart final ban from uh, Lejeune's there, and now those final picks will come about. So they still have the Tide Hunter available. Uh, also, a Clockwork could be an okay option here. Mm, if they wanted to offlane the Slark, they could do something like a Core Silencer, very good against the Faceless Void and the Invoker, uh, kind of in general. Ten seconds. I haven't remaining. seen BBC in too many games here, so kind of curious what their what their Five general plan is. Remaining. Reserve time. 
Well, reserve time will come through, and we'll, we'll just be a little patient here, folks. We'll be patient, saving the voices a little bit, feeling the rasp. Had to get some water in the long break. It's been a long day for BBC. They had a really long best of three series against MYI before this, and now this is going into game three. So they've had a lot of Dota today. It's been a good solid eight hours of Dota. Not a bad way to spend a Wednesday. I don't say so myself. It's pretty late over there in Europe now. As it's Oh, God, it is pretty late over there. You crazy. Crazy Euros staying up all night playing Dota. Undying, the final choice for BBC. So they've got a funky core here. It's either the Sky Rat, the Wraith King, or the Undying. Uh, really curious which one of them will get the farm priority. We've seen all three of them. Uh, Undying, probably Ten the least remaining. likely of the bunch. I would imagine it's a core Wraith King uh, with the support Five Undying Skyrath. As as usual, he's so good in the early stages. In the lanes, not someone you want to square off against he's in the tri-lane scenario. Few can match the power of the Undying. And he can scale okay. Um, he'll probably move into something like a pipe. That's a pretty core item on him. Look at the mech. Just look for those general aura-based uh, support utility items. Flesh Golem does give him some power towards the late game. Buffs up the team and uh, helps out their damage output quite a bit. Here we don't see all too much. And uh, curious how it'll work out for BBC. I like that they're doing something a little different here in this third game. This is the time to bring out the pocket strats as you absolutely need a win. So Lions, uh, they'll need their final core. I think it's almost, well, it's really hard to say if it'll be a core Venge or not. We've seen our support, and we saw Era on the position one Venge, but here they'll grab the Ember Spirit, so they will switch it up a little more if my nuts right away. Grabs the Marana. It'll be Mini on the Vengeful Spirit, and Era will take point on the Ember Spirit, headed to uh, most likely the safe lane farm. So yeah, Quicks will be on the Invoker. Interesting. We'd see a Quicks Invoker here. Could be good stuff. So a double W33 Slark should be pretty solid. I think a high skill cap hero fits in his general skill set. Very elusive. Get a blink dagger, move around, pounce around, and uh, pretty high skill cap hero. If you get a blink dagger between that and pounce, you can be very elusive with the shadow dance and hard to lock down. Find strike kills around the map. Really get that snowball roll. And one of the great things about Slark is he can do a lot of damage without a lot of items early on. And once he gets a lot of farm towards that late game, he scales pretty damn well. That essence shift really stacks up, makes him hit pretty damn hard for a Murloc. And um, will certainly be a force to be reckoned with. So we'll load in. Welcome one and welcome all. We've got our final game of the day. This is game three, the ace match of BBC and Lions. The final game for the Prepare Summit for 2 battle. European Qualifier. Lanes, let's take a look here. BBC will have W33 playing on the Slark. He'll be headed to the safe lane. It will be Hockey playing on the Razor. He's headed to the mid lane. I know he's got an interesting looking helmet there. The helm of the Twisted Arc. Yeah, it looks kind of funky. Looks like they'll do an aggro try. It'll be Padrino playing on the Undying this time. Levy will take point on the Wraith King, and that puts Solitude on the Skywrath Mage. So this is definitely a bit more interesting, and is it actually Padrino that's going to be farming? It might be. He's got the Stout Shield, Boots first on the Wraith King, and Skywrath going all consumables. This could be a farming Undying. All right, Padrino has been playing the off lane. Last two games he played off lane Centaur. So maybe he'll roam around a bit. Uh, regardless, this off lane for uh, BBC will be interesting. Dire side, we've got Team Lions. They won the first game pretty handily and then got wrecked by the Meepo from W33 in game number two. They're hungry for vengeance. It's Jonas playing in the safe lane on the farming Faceless Void. He was off lane on the Void last game, sticking to what he knows. Quicks will be playing the Invoker solo mid, and that'll be an aggro tri lane with Era on the Ember Spirit. Mini will the take Helm on the Vengeful Spirit, and good old My Nuts playing on the Priestess of the Moon, the Marana, Double the game. hero that he has played more than many other throughout this European qualifier tour. Almost exclusively, actually. And he's been playing this roaming position for Marana, help out the other lanes, and then start to transition towards a carry as we look towards the late game. They will start off very aggressive. They want to kill this Razor early on. It looks like they could draw an early first blood. Great lane block comes out of quicks. Hockey doesn't get one, and now he's positioned so poorly for this. Magic Missile flies in. Arrow will actually be off the mark. Certainly would have been a first blood. They may still be able to get it. He'll steal damage from the Invoker. A few more arrows. They find the first blood regardless. They don't even need my nuts to connect with an arrow to get the first blood. It is Vengeful Spirit who gets the bonus gold. So now they'll rotate back down bottom, secure some space for Era, and make sure this Slark 
doesn't get too much farm. Both sides up to some trickery here. It will be the farming undying, and out come the supports, but the time lapse, or time walk back, pardon me, from Jonas will keep him alive as, oh, it's a fake back. Mini and my nuts, they're going right back towards the mid lane. Hockey this time, he's in tower range, but Mini connects with the stun. Sunstrike will be on the mark. This time the arrow connects, just a couple of right clicks. Mini tank in the tower. My, now my nuts will take over once more. Vengeful Spirit gets credit for the kill, and that'll make it a quick two to nil. They are hungry for blood this game. Solitude teepees in, but not in enough time to save his friend. The two supports will rotate over, create some space for the Faceless Void in the safe lane. Arrow from downtown. Will not connect as Levy sidesteps it. But, whoa, daddy, are they off to the races. Thousand gold already in the favor of the dire side. Era farming well against the Slark, even just by his lonesome. Now that supports rotate down, uh, W33 will find himself struggling without the help of his own supports, who will move down to uh, the bottom lane. It will end up being a safe lane try for BBC, it looks like. And in the off lane, uh, that means it will just be solo Padrino. Uh, he's racking up the last hits on this Undying, but now that it's just him, Jonas should find plenty of room to farm. Still can't really go blow for blow with the Undying, but shouldn't go down to him solo unless he does something really silly, wastes that time walk, or of course somebody rotates up on him. So all in all, I think that's pretty good news for Lion. Uh, Lions, it opens up space for their Void, and down bottom they shouldn't have too much trouble keeping Era safe. He's already gotten a lot of farm out of the gate, uh, kind of just winning the duel against uh, W33. And with the arrow magic missile, there's a lot of setup. Even if he just connects with a searing chains, he'll probably get another point in them early on. So that two second disable should be either enough time for the Venge to close the gap and get the magic missile, or just for my nuts to throw an arrow and set up a, a potential kill. So this is this is a really scary aggro tri lane coming out on uh, the dire team mid. Whoa, hockey getting very aggressive here. Haystrun will dive the tower, stealing a lot of damage. Not Dying really anywhere for quicks tower. to go. It's we'll try to juke around the tree line. Mini comes in with a stun. A lot of tower shots. Arrow flies through it, hits him, and they'll find vengeance. So pretty good for the Razor. He gets a solo kill out of it, gets a little bit of extra experience, and Volker doesn't get uh, anything for uh, for that kill that his supports pick up. But they still shut down the Razor for that deep commitment, and that makes it 3-1, to one, the change. Yeah, pretty even. Uh, I guess the disparity is now these dire supports, they've got a good bit of momentum from all of their roaming. They'll be close to their level 3 now. And the Radiant supports, they're just working the jungle well, on the slow roll, but they'll find level 3 on the Sky Wrath. He's got his boots already. Wraith King, he went boots first. And they are just stacking and pulling, doing all that work. There is uh, no block in the pull camp, so they'll be okay there. Looks like it will be a lane rotation from Lions here. Jonas will come down to the off lane, and up top they'll switch the try lane. They'll catch Fadrino off guard. Arrow flies through. It won't connect, but it will zone him out. Now there's just nowhere for the Undying to go. He may be tanky, but not tanky enough. And Arrow secures the kill as the rotation catches him completely unaware. Now the to or the. Uh, the uh, tombstone there, that's what it's called. It'll give Era a thousand, or a thousand. What am I talking about? Oh my god, I'm getting loopy from all this solo casting. Like a hundred gold bounty. Ooh, Levy almost gets hit by the Sunstrike. Jonas probably could have had that kill if he did, but now gets turned around on, gets silenced. We'll be able to survive the initial damage. He should be okay with the wand charges. And yeah, the time walk back to the low ground. Doves will chase him down, but eh, won't hurt him all that much. He'll just salve up and then rotate back through towards the tower. So these early rotations from Lions. Papa LeJohns. Proving pretty successful. And now rotating. Era picking up that kill. The rotation was well worth it. They've given Slark a lot of room to farm, so he's recovered from that um, that early bout, or lack of farm, I guess you could say. 14 denies on the Ember Spirits. Certainly slowing him down a bit. But Era still holding on to that lead. BBC's lane's kind of in disarray right now. As Wraith King, he'll head up top to try and help the Undying. And the supports, they're, they're just moving around the map. It's kind of hard for BBC to read where Mini and Minots are going to be. And with this roaming duo, it's pretty risky, but they've found four kills already, and that's more Dyer's than enough at the five-minute mark to make attack. a roaming support duo well, uh, well worth it. And they'll come down bottom. It's another 3v2, it seems, in every skirmish. They're just finding these pickoffs. We'll see Invoker or miss an Invoker getting a kill on Wraith King, but this is what we're looking at. Jonas down bottom gets initiated on. Now Slark, not level six. The arrow... Well, we'll have a pause. The arrow hits a creep. So Slark should be able to survive this even without the pounce. Wraith King, yeah, he just got caught by uh, by Sunstrike. So got taken low. Looks like he lost the duel against Era, and then the Sunstrike finished him off. Sorry about that one, folks. Was looking at the incoming kill down in the bottom lane. And uh, will be kind of a one-for-one one across the map, but...
Faceless Foy in there. He's the off laner. He's already found his level 5. No points in backtrack. He's going pretty aggressive. The Invoker. He gets a solo kill, and that's that's great news for him. Okay, down bottom. How's this going to transpire? Minus has already used the arrow. Hit a creep. The Doves will chase him down once more, and W33 will be able to live. So picking up a kill on Slark before he hits level 6 and gets Shadow Dance is kind of ideal, but it looks like they won't be able to find it, at least not right now. Oh, but a TP down. Jonas with the time walk forward. Mini will try to find the stun, but, oh, he channels the Dark Pack and will be able to use it with much avail. But Sunstrike, it'll be on the mark. And Quicks, he's got the Quick Fingers so far. They set up the kill. And Invoker getting the last hit is great news. Helps him out from afar. Now he's got his Gloves of Haste, and looks like he'll just be pulling up for a pretty quick Midas. Pretty standard stuff on your Exhort Invoker, and going 2-1-2 and two already. He's off to a decent start. His CS in the mid lane, not too shabby either. 22-13, and 13, uh, up against the 12-2 and two of the Razor. So winning this mid matchup quite handily, and a lot of that because Razor's already uh, fallen twice. So you'd expect him to be pretty decently far ahead, and uh, he certainly is. Looks like the supports may be rotating towards the mid once more. Not enough mana, uh, magic, mana on mini to use the magic missile. Too many M's there. So, yeah, perhaps thinking about a rotation mid, but we'll have to save it for another day. Curious what they'll do with all of this undying farm. He's the one farming kind of the best on the side of the Radiant, uh, except for that of the Slark. And undying doesn't scale that well. He has his uh, tranquil boots and just a casual Sage's mask for now. Probably will turn into a Soul Ring. But oh, oh, down bottom. Here you go. Your Sun Strike Chronosphere combo. They'll set up a kill on Slark as Jonas has found a lot of experience. Slark just now gets his six, but they make it happen once more. And this time it's the Faceless Void that gets the kill. Lions furthering their lead that much more. Now about 1,500 gold and experience in their favor. Only seven minutes in. They are really hungry for vengeance this game. Now that they don't have a Meepo, they're wise of the game. And uh, they are hungry to perhaps end this one sooner rather than later with all this aggression they're putting out. Undying will be Radio left by his lonesome in the top lane. The Solitude attack. and Levy. They rotate about. They're smoked. And they will rotate back towards the top. The Soul Ring's now been delivered to the Undying, so he's a little more spammable. Ooh, they fake the top, now they just attack. head towards bottom. They want to pressure Quicks before he can get this Hand of Midas. He'll put an Observer Ward down in the lane, but he walks down at almost the worst time. He'll connect with the stun. Out comes the damage from the Skywrath Mage, and he'll find a kill on the Razor before he goes down. Still lose the Invoker, but Minots comes in to help him out. And a one for one, not so shabby. They will still lose Minots. It's a one for two, but now in the top lane, uh, those supports rotating out. Arrow will find a kill with the help of the Vengeful Spirit onto the Undying. So it's a two for two across the map. And of course, the recap doesn't count it, but. Um, yeah, pretty even trade all around. This Razor just can't catch a break. As soon as he thinks he's going to get a kill, there's somebody right there ready to chop him down and make his life Radiant's more difficult. Top tower is under attack. Looking at net worth, it is Era that's really the big breadwinner so far. He's got his phase boots. What's coming out on the courier here? It looks like just a bottle and his ring of protection. So uh, we'll probably be moving towards an Aquila. Yeah, I think that makes some sense. Nothing too surprising about that, but just net worth wise, he's starting to come online and even just having early phase boots is pretty damn good. Against the tranquils of the Undying, there's just no way to get away from him. He can just sprint and chase him down. So early rotations proving very successful. Nine to four at the nine minute mark. It's been kind of a bloodbath so far. W33 has now found his power treads and Courier will be delivering uh, his magic wand and a bracer. So looking towards his drums, his initial core items coming out here. Invoker did get slowed down a bit in terms of his Midas timing, but still about two thirds away to the recipe. So he'll have it around that 10, 11 minute mark. Not too shabby considering uh, all things considered is what I'm trying to say. Here comes the smoke rotation from BBC towards the top. It's a three on two. They want to punish Era for his greed thus far. He's two, one, and zero. He's been picking on their undying. They want to give this bully a taste of his own medicine, but they will reveal their trap, and they just head back to the lane. We'll try and make some space for their undying, who's still I'm wondering what core items will go for. Radiant's I feel like it has to be a mech. When you're putting this kind of um, this farm priority on a core hero like undying, Radiant it's it's got to be a mech. It's got to be some sort of a team fight oriented uh, fighting item. It's not going to be a carry undying by any means, but still haven't seen any items that really give us an inkling of where he's going at this point. 
Jonas leeching a lot of experience. Now he's got his power treads complete. He's found his level 8 in terms of offlaners. He's had a pretty damn good time. We'll scoot down, steals the rune from Levy, gets the bounty, and now we'll start going to town. Quix comes in, has a Forge Spirit, but I don't think they'll be able to grab this kill, or will they? There's your Chrono Spear. Sunstrike connects, and Quix will get a solo or get credit for that one. Up top, Mini gets initiated on as Hockey rotates his way over. He will swap out, trying to make some space for himself. Not going to happen. And the Razor will end the little streak there and get a pretty penny for his troubles. So one for one around the map, and uh, support for support will get picked off. Razor gets one kill, and Voker gets the other. So a startlingly even exchange. But that kill will secure Quicks, his decently timed hand of Midas. Uh, first transmute comes out right at the 10 and a half minute mark. And that timing, eh, not too bad, as I mentioned. Already has the Basilius and the brown boots to go with it. So now the farming can commence. They'll have one of their late game tools secured. Down bottom, Jonas gets caught by the pounce, but My Nuts is here. We'll have an arrow available. Time lock does connect on one, but Jonas will fall to the Wraith King as he comes in. And my nuts cut inside. They will try and get the sun strike in the right position. Mini coming in wants to finish off W33. He'll live and it'll end up being a three for nil the other way. Oh man, Lions, they commit so much for the Slark and they just can't get it. And finally a big trade. BBC right back in it. A low, wow, yeah, zeroed out. That's about 1,200 net worth trade, and that's where Lions were holding on to their lead. So all that work they did in the early game is now not quite gone to waste. They've secured some good farm for their Ember Spirit and their Invoker, but that early lead they picked up has now expired, and they'll have to tighten up just a bit. That's part of the power of that elusive Slark, W33, knowing his limits and handling himself well. Picks up that Drum of Endurance recipe, and uh, we'll just be a robe of the Magi away from grabbing that item. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Look down bottom, they'll pressure the tower a little bit. Tombstone's been used, but Jonas will start chopping it down. It does yield a pretty big bounty, so chopping it, it behind the tower, yeah, kind of interesting. No problem taking it out. Mini will connect with a stun and a scream onto the Undying, and he'll be able to survive for now. Meanwhile, up top, Slark gets a solo kill on the Ember Spirit. That's a big one. Now he's gaining some momentum and era. We'll get knocked down a few rungs. All of a sudden, that net worth chart moving around a bit, and Slark will be number two, taking over that spot where Era once was. Now in the bottom lane, we'll see initiation onto Jonas. Mystic Flare comes in. The swap for Mini helps break up the damage. Now Arrow connects on Levy. Chrono on two. Sunstrike will go on to Levy. He is sitting level seven. Hasn't skilled up the ultimate yet. Will grab it at the last second here. Skyrath the Mage, the first to fall. Skyrath, or uh, Wraith King coming right back up. We'll find this kill on Jonas easily. And now a stun on Mini. That'll be a two for nil, or two for one. Going the other way. Era TP's in. We're looking to get some vengeance for his fallen foes. Searing Chains on one. Now the Flesh Golem is used. And another Tombstone comes out. Minots will leap to safety. And Era, he'll have to back up to boot. Now the Slark is on his way in. Thinking about his options. Has the drums complete but won't go for it. So that'll be the end of that a little skirmish there. A two for two, so a pretty even trade. But a little bit awkward. Lions slowly but surely falling behind here as W33 getting very aggressive behind the tower. Once my nuts misses the pounce. We'll be able to use the dark pack to clear off uh, the searing chains. My nuts thinking about an arrow, throws it. W33 will be able to sidestep it. But while that's happening in the mid, Razor and the Skywrath pick up a kill onto the Invoker. Now W33 goes back in onto Mini. Moonlight Shadow's been used to swap out as he's in Shadow Dance. He'll be coming out and looking pretty elusive. Can they lock him down somehow? Searing chain on two! But the dark pact is there. W33 making the great escape. He'll be able to survive. Now the Razor coming in. Will connect on three with the Plasma Field. Flame Guard will expire. Silence onto Era. He'll get locked down and left behind. That's a dead Ember Spirit. And now they'll possibly press forward. Mystic Flare split across two. And Mini will be able to live. So another fight that's not going the way of Lions. And all of a sudden, BBC have a huge lead. 2,000 gold, 4,000 experience. Their rotations have Dyer's just been on point. And Lions, after that beautiful start, Dyer's just getting so sloppy with it. Fortified. We'll see a tombstone come down in the tree line here. Make some of those little zombies. Mini taking some damage. Flesh Golem used once more as the arrow is off the mark. Tier 1 tower goes Dyer's down, but they're not done yet. They're fallen. still hungry for aggression. Levy coming around from the mid lane. Jonas will time walk Radiance down to the low ground. And the rest attack. of Lions will just mount the retreat. Quicks pressuring the mid lane while he can. Hand of Midas kicking in. 1,800 gold has been amassed in his inventory, but to little avail. He's the only one that's still top in the net worth chart. BBC quickly nipping at him. Their cores really catching up. Undying with 2,600 gold. We'll see what he wants to move into. Is it a pipe? Is it a mech? 
Time will tell. I still think a mech coming out of this timing would be great for BBC, especially based on how aggressive lines have been. Now this will allow BBC to stay aggressive and have themselves that healing tool and put some hurt on while that Handomitis on Invoker still is not Radiant's doing a hell of a lot. But instead, he'll be looking attack. towards a Crimson Guard. Vanguard, first item on the Undying, so he'll be their frontliner, and he'll be pretty damn tanky. Pretty good game for the Crimson Guard. I guess they're anticipating that Invoker will go for a Necro Book. Lots of summons on the field with the Forge Spirit, so not a bad time to have some of that... Uh, some of that Crimson Guard block. Quite a bit of right clickers also. Actually, everybody on this dire team wants to throw out some right clicks of sorts. So, a eh, smart item pick up from the, uh, from the Undying. Blink Dagger will be the first item onto the Invoker. So, Quicks will be a little bit more momentous here. Era up top. Could get sandwiched. Four heroes from BBC in the vicinity. But they won't go for it. Instead, they'll just head back to farming. Sark probably pulling up for his Blink Dagger. 1,500 gold towards it. And a core item on the Murloc. Razor will be the one to go for the mech, and he's got it just about complete. Minot's a walk right into W33. Moonlight Shadow comes in, but not enough, as the Chronosphere locks Marana in place, and Mystic Flare will be there to bring him down. Era TPs to the mid tower, ready to help his team out in this skirmish. Flame Guard's on. He'll go in with Searing Chains on two. Tombstone comes down right in front of the tower. Undying, helping support the team with some of his sustainability. They'll pick off these Dyer's Forge Spirits, get a little bit of extra fortified. gold there. Glyph comes out for the tower, and BBC, tower they're looking to grab another Tier 1 tower, and looks like they'll get it. Lion's not in a position to defend it, and down Dyer's she goes. That's now 3,000 gold, 4,500 experience. It'll be even more once the graph updates, and they pinged the top Tier 1 right away. They're ready to just keep this snowball moving. Keep it rolling. They'll head towards the top lane. And okay, Slark not going for the Blink Dagger. Instead, the slightly more aggressive uh, wants to go the Shadow Blade route. Has the amulet picked up already and just pulling up for that Claymore. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So, Tier 1 tower Dyer's up top. We'll take a lot of damage in the bottom. They're just trying to split push. Era Radiant pressuring the bottom Tier 1 fortified. in the mid. The rest of the team chipping at this Tier 1 as well. Uh, but, Adreno, Dyer's he's here to make a defense. The Tombstone comes attack. down once more. Goes in on the mini. And... W33 just looking in posi get in position attack. for the pounce. Nice swap from mini to stop him dead in his tracks. Radiant's but, Radiant's Dark Pack will still bring him down. Gone. And that's the end of it. They will get a kill in the bottom Tier 1. Can they get away unscathed? Jonas has a TP scroll, just looking to Dyer's time walk into the tree line, and he'll be able to do it. No way to stop him. And they'll get a kill on the Vengeful Spirit, basically in exchange for that bottom tier one tower. But up top, that one does end up getting denied by my nut. So a minor victory there. And finds a, a tower denial. So Sark now just 400 short pieces of gold away from that uh, Shadow Blade, and that'll give him so much ability just to run around and find solo kills. All these squishy heroes are just so easy to pick off. Even the Ember Spirit, if he's caught with his Flame Guard down, uh, could be susceptible to the power of the Slark, and the Invoker also. He's still pretty squishy, even though he has a Blink Dagger. They're going to have to uh, spend quite a bit on uh, detection tools here. Minnie's already got uh, a couple of sentries, probably mostly for de-warding, but uh, they'll find uh, a dual use here once that Shadow Blade from Slark is revealed. Speaking of Slark, up top, Jonas will get things started with a Chronosphere. Sunstrike hit, throw the Magic Missile, and that's a kill on the Slark. They'll end the killing spree, and Minnie's going to be the one to grab that last hit once more. Now Quix moves into the Roche Pit. Five-second arrow stun from My Nuts on the high ground, and they'll look to take out Roche. That solo kill on Slark did yield a thousand net worth change. So, again, a step in the right direction for Lions. Well, 3,000 gold, 4,000 experience. They're getting there. They're getting there. Now the Crimson Guard has been... Oops, didn't mean to do that. Crimson Guard's now been picked up by the Undying, so they are team fight ready. Still no mech, but an early Crimson Guard like this mitigates a lot of damage. Ooh, looks like we're having some other issue. What do you mean you're stuck? Oh, that was weird. All right. Well, at least he's secured now. That was really awkward, though. I've never seen that one happen before. All right. Well, 
Sharing is caring, yes. Glad BBC knew how to deal with it, because obviously not something that Era has dealt with. W33 will get a backstab here. Jumps onto Jonas. He won't have the damage to bring him down. The Shadow Blade has now been revealed. And Lions will have to prepare themselves with some detection. I think BBC will probably stay aggressive here. With this early Crimson Guard, they can definitely take a 5v5 team fight, mitigate a ton of damage. They've got the mech on Razor uh, also complete. So two really huge items in a 5v5 area. Only at the 20-minute mark, so much damage will be mitigated and then healed up by the mech. It's, uh, it's actually pretty ridiculous. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So, some ward action coming down, and ooh, a double damage rune bottled up by Era. So if BBC want to force the issue now, it might not be the best time, but still, they will make this rotation. Five heroes coming in, and Slark will be joining them shortly. So, Lions, they're doing okay. They just need to bide their time, kind of uh, minimize the bleeding at this point. Let that Hand of Midas on the Invoker really kick in. Let him get up his Necro Book, or whatever item it is he wants to go for next. Uh, here in the mid lane, they may have to demount, uh, mount the defense sooner rather than later. Arrow will continue pushing this tier 2 down bottom. Almost has his Battle Fury, just a Perseverance away, but with the double damage rune in the bottle, I think they may need Era to really make a defense here. Roshan has been finished off. Oh, that pause threw me off. Sorry about that. Quicks does finish off Rosh, so it takes him a while. And maybe they'll be okay with trading the Rosh for tier 2 tower mid, but they can't knock it down that quickly. They ping out W33. They know he's in this general vicinity. Uh, they won't find him. Of course, Quicks is the one to grab the Aegis of the Immortal. So another step in the right direction. Dyer's Finding these small pick-offs and a Roche. They should be able to make something happen as Minots walks to the high ground right into a pounce. Nowhere for all Marana to go except the high ground. Wow, he lives with just a couple of hit points to spare. The positive earn charge keeps him alive, but W33 will scout him out. The second pounce connects, and Minots, after a very noble effort, will still get taken out by the Slark. Now W33 on the run, has used his Shadow Dance and his Shadow Blade as Arrow with the double damage rune on, trying to trap him down, but he's just too elusive. This Slark is damn speedy with that Shadow Dance movement speed, and he will be able to make it out. So, just a solo pick on the Marana. And that's where the BBC kind of uh, team fight momentum will slow down. They do half damage to the tier 2 tower, kind of in exchange for the Roche. And Quicks will obviously be quite happy with that. Deceptive rune of invisibility. Shadows Deceptive rune of invisibility. As BBC get a little bit of counter warding action here, they'll get a sentry and an observer with their own sentry. Era, Moonlight Shadows on. He's getting stalked down by Padrino. Although. Maybe it's the other way around. Era stalking down Padrino. He's got some support coming in. Invisibility rune on. Will connect with the Searing Chains. In comes the Sun Strike. Huge damage out on the Undying. Gets off the Tombstone. Uses his Crimson Guard. Will get healed up just a little bit there. Now the support is coming in. They jump onto Era. Mystic Flare. Silence. He won't be able to escape this one. It's a one for nil going the other way. Mini and my nuts on the run. Mini will get left behind and takes a stun. That'll be a kill there. And W33, meanwhile, in the mid lane. Takes some damage, but will live. He bumps right into my nuts. Oh, gets the backstab. Connects with the pounce. Stops the leap from doing anything at all. And that'll be a three for nil around the map. Sunstrike flying through, but... Uh, they will be able to dodge it. Things looking a lot more rough for Team Lion all of a sudden. Following that Roche and some of the farm that they found, uh, the graph was starting to move in their favor, but following that, things just Dyer's going right back to where they were. Attack. BBC group up in the bottom and appear to be interested in pressuring this Tier 2 tower. W33 finds Dyer's Quicks in the jungle. Can he actually attack. solo him down, though, is another question. Gets the backstab, connects with the pounce, Dyer's Razor coming in. That'll be more than enough attack. damage if they can find him. But fast fingers on Quicks will be able to ghost walk and will live. But oh gosh, he reveals himself. W33 just goes right back in on him. And that'll be the end of the Aegis of the Immortal. Also creating a lot of space as three heroes are playing around with the Slark. Meanwhile, the rest of Slark's team just pressuring the bottom tier 2 tower. There's a glyph standing, but now the tombstone comes down. Slark, now he finds Jonas. Again, connects with the backstab, but uh, the void not going to be the easy kill that they're hoping for. Arrow comes in down bottom, will be off the mark. Now this tier 2 tower taking some pretty decent damage, but will stay out of deny range. Now on the top lane, W33 and Hockey, they'll let us move into this tier 2. Lion's just kind of getting pulled in too many directions at once. 
4,000 gold, 7,500 experience as BBC. Let's continue their reign of dominance here. Already a rod of Atos picked up on Solitude. Undying. Still hasn't grabbed anything since his Crimson Guard. And Levy. He's found his level 11 here at least. They will get the Tier 2 tower in the top lane. That will secure Razor's Aghanim Scepter. And W33. He's got 2,500 gold. But he's already just rolling out of control. So, things just going to carry on here. BBC will find some more efficient farm around the map as they clear out the dire jungle, do a little bit of work in their own. Looks like Razor taking out a stack or two here. Yeah, just doing some multi-farming with that plasma field. Ah, pretty good stuff. The Faceless Void trying to transition into more of a carry. Jonas doing the same thing he did in that first match of this series. Maelstrom, Mask and Madness, and just, just going for the right clicks. That's now the Battle Fury out on Era, so he finds his first core item. And not only helping him out in these team fights, but giving him some, uh, some pretty big farming utility also. Solitaire will get picked off, and Invoker once more gets the kill with the uh, Sunstrike. Let's take a look at the net worth change on that one. Only about a thousand, but still pretty good for a singleton pickoff. And you can even see how much pressure Minots has been on here. Very rarely you'll see him go for the double bracer. It just doesn't happen so much. And just feeling that pressure. Invoker picks up his Necro Book now. Gold it's a level two. Is a great conductor. And ooh, Era. He's getting stocked down, but he's got a fire remnant down. He'll scoot to it. And he'll be just fine. Era playing very safe as he farms out the lanes. Ancient's getting taken out. Still a while before next Roche comes up. Null Tally just hanging out in the pit. Will be a level 3 Necro book on the Invoker before too long. So he is he is starting to get a little bit scary. Still number one on net worth, but Razor with an Ag's Refresher is always something to fear. And I'm not sure that he'll go Refresher next, but uh, even so, he has the Aghanims up already, and that means they can start trucking these uh, Tier 2 towers. Only two remaining on the Dire side. Total tower count is 5-4, to four, of course, in favor of BBC. Five hero rotation. BBC moving towards the mid, and Hockey Hill just uses ultimate to soften up this tower. They know that there isn't a glyph that was used in this last skirmish, and now only Dyer's one outer tower top. standing Dyer's for the dire side. 27 minutes in. They're losing map control Radiance quickly. Once this last attack. tier 2 tower goes down, they'll lose a lot of control around the Roche pit. BBC still have their tier 2 standing in the bottom, and um, eh, could make a big difference. So, everyone's going to go back to farming. Things will slow down a little bit, though. As I say that, it looks like lions move in and start to invade the Radiant Jungle. Levy may get caught out. He does have his ultimate available, so even if he gets scouted out, he's uh, almost the ideal target from the perspective of BBC to be initiated on. Era will press forward. Uses his... That was awkward. Uses chains on nothing. And... They'll put down an Observer and a Sentry. Make sure there's nothing... Inbound here, no Slark hunting him down, and certainly not. He's busy farming up their jungle. He's got an ultimate orb now, maybe an early Scotty coming out on him. Time will tell. And, yeah, everyone's getting a little more passive here. Just trying to farm BBC okay with the lead that they've picked up for themselves. Just going to farm their next round of core items, and... Lions, they're on the back foot, so they'll be happy just to sit back and find a little bit of recovery. Use that hand of Midas. W33 jumping onto my nuts. He'll find him. Will he get the kill, though? Gets the backstab, the pounds, but there's a counter kill this time. And oh, the swap just in the nick of time. W33, he'll fall for the bait. And Lions had plenty of support inbound. They have to burn a chrono and a swap. But that's the high value target, and they shut him down. That'll be another 1,000 net worth change in favor of Lions. Put a little dent in things. Not an insurmountable lead by BBC. They need to be a little careful. So with that, Lions will regain some control of their own jungle. And we'll go back to farming it there. Minots has decided he's had enough. And we'll pick up a gem of true sight to deal with this Slark a little bit more easily. And also secure a ward control, but Radiant don't have too many wards down. They've got one smack dab in the middle of the dire jungle, but that's going to be it. 
So they don't really have a lot of vision to deal with at the moment anyhow. The level 3 Necronomicon is out. You got a little bit of true sight coming out of that, big boy. What's going on, big boy? Man, they'll find this ward here. They don't even need the gem. This Necronomicon warrior doing some work. Bottom lane. Hockey. Yeah, take some damage, but we'll be able to mech to survive. W33 will get caught out here. Minots has the gem. They'll be able to see him when he's done with the Shadow Dance. Will leap back to safety now. They'll connect with the missile, but does have the Dark Pack. They lose Jonas. Now Mini gets caught in the pounce. It'll be a two for nil. Go in the way of BBC. Ghost Scepter buys him a little bit of time, but that just makes the Dark Pack hurt that much more. And they will find the kill there. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Eric gets a tier two tower kill. And that is actually one of the bigger towers, as we've talked about. That's the big one that gives BBC control with the Roche Pit. And with that one down, it's just the tier two mid. Which isn't quite the same. And another decent net worth change. Going the way of BBC now. And... Slark, no, he's just sitting on 1800 gold. Slowing down his progression a lot. I'll take that. The Undying has now picked up a Mystic Staff. Probably a Shiva's Guard coming out. And the Wraith King will grab a Blink Dagger. So now Levy, he's got himself longer range initiation. And Era, 3200 gold. He's been farming up a storm. This Battle Fury working wonders for the Ember Spirit. And using that... Farming tool to much avail. Lions are actually on the road to recovery. 2,500 gold disparity is all that separates these two teams, even with a six kill difference. Jonas, what's he working on next? Probably a BKB with that Mithril Hammer. Wants to make sure he can survive the magic damage onslaught. And we'll see the Invoker. He's picked up BOTs next. So still just going with these mobility items. Blink BOTs. Wants to be able to split push lanes. And uh, commence some rat dota if necessary. Second Roche has now respawned. And Lions did get the first Roche uncontested. Looks like they're smoked up and may be considering doing it again. But BBC is inbound. The smoke will get broken. Slark is up. Levy comes in. Goes on to Jonas. They'll stop him dead in his tracks. They almost bring him down. The silence comes out just a little too late. They're still able to secure the kill. Now on the backside, they're pressing forward onto Quicks. Yeah, they've got his sentry ward down. Moonlight Shadow. Not going to be enough. Quicks. He'll fall. And it's a three for nil the other way. Make it a three for one. Nope, it's a three for nil. Pardon me. It's the Wraith King that goes down. He has the reincarnation. And he comes right back to life. Three for nil outside of the Roche Pit. And now BBC will be able to grab it. Taking a look at buybacks. They could consider buying back to try to contest the Roche on. They do have them on uh, two of the three heroes. The two cores outside of the Vengeful Spirit. Arrow flies in. Does hit W3-3. W. But looks like they will not be deterred, nor will buybacks be used. And right when it looks like Lions are starting to get back into this game, BBC are there, and uh, they regain that lost footing. Mech is used. The arrow hits Roche this time, so it actually gives him a hand in this. And BBC will grab an Aegis of the Immortal, and Ult Tally just going to continue to stay on the ground there. And it is the Slark who grabs the Aegis of the Immortal. No big surprise about that one. Bottom tier, tier 3 gets chipped on by old Cardi. Now W33 goes right in. They've got the gem. They see him. He gets hit by an arrow. Now he's going to go down. Or is he? Manages to get off the Shadow Dance. He'll turn it around. Era. Whoa, where the hell? The what? Oh my gosh, that was crazy. He swapped right as he, as he did the ultimate. Wraith King will fall. Doesn't have the ultimate this time around. Padrino comes in. He's in the front lines. Flesh Golem on. This is a one tanky mother. But Era with the chains on two. W33 still alive for now. Has the Aegis of the Immortal, but it'll finally go down. Era finishes him off with a slight. And they'll get the kill on to Mini. Era off to the side. Will go down to the Mystic Flare. My nuts. TP's out. And Jonas, he'll move into the tree line. TP scroll on sec on cooldown for another seven seconds, but we'll be able to, to go to safety. Oh, I wanted to look at that recap. Damn it. Losing steam here, folks. Assault Karas almost complete on the Razor. So he's not going the Refresher, but he just wants to go Armor. And Minus Armor, great on him. Of course, uh, Eye of the Storm does do physical. So uh, also... Adds those minus armor charges. So great synergy there. We'll buff up the damage that the Slark does. And does he have a Scotty complete? Oh my gosh, he does. Well, That's a full Scotty on the Slark. We're 34 minutes in. Now he's damn tanky and he Radiant's hurts. There's no getting away from this guy now. Unless you can time walk over a ravine. You're, you're pretty much dead. There's no running away from the Scotty Slark.
No, Shiva's complete on um, the Undying here. And it's a, the biggest gold lead we've seen so far this game. Get your ruler, find that line of best fit. And it's just been up and up on BBC's side of things. 7,500 gold, 14,000 experience. The level chart. Wowza, two level 18s. That's a little bit surprising. You'd think the Invoker would be a little higher, but uh-oh, Meteor comes down inside of the Chronosphere, but W33 is just too big. The Eye of Scotty helping him out now. Levy TPs in. Arrow gets hit by one of the or hits one of the creeps, rather. Murano will fall off on, around the backside. The Necronomicon unit's trying to chase down W33, but he's just regenerating up, trying to jump off the map. That won't happen. Now they'll lose Jonas, and they'll get to clean up the Necronomicon units. It's another two for nil. It's starting to look grim for Lions. They're falling apart. BBC just finding pickoff after pickoff. Invoker's Hand of Might is keeping him number one on net worth, but it's not giving him enough experience to deal with all the kills that they're conceding, or deaths they're conceding is the better way to put it. W33 goes into their jungle, farms it out once more. How's Eris farm? He needs something. He'll go into an ultimate orb, but he still just isn't that scary force you need this Ember Spirit to be. His farm isn't bad, but between the Razor and the Slark, they're just, mm, they're hurting. Manta Style is his item of choice, a rarity for a second item on the Ember Spirit. You'll more often see the crit BKB, even a second, uh, second Battle Fury. But he wants the Manta here, wants to be able to disjoint that Silence. That's really the big thing uh, from the Skywrath. That Silence has cost him his life a couple of times now, making him unable to ultimate to get away. Does he have a Fire Remnant down? Moonlight Shadow's used. Razor's coming in. They've got a Sentry Ward. He'll get stunned up. And he does have a Remnant in the Radiant Jungle. And he'll be able to move to But Slark. Thinking about it, perhaps. I'll no, he'll just find that. a Bounty Rune and head back to safety. Ooh, the Scream. Ooh, that's scary. Slark, so elusive, man. W33, he's just running around the map. He's really not afraid of much. He's just moving into enemy territory. He's farming wherever he feels like it. Hey, you look solo. Hey, how would you like uh, how would you like a death there, my nuts? He's thinking about it. Won't be able to find him. My nuts TP's out just in the nick of time, but Slark ready to come up and make his life a living hell. Other item progression. Looks like Quick's moving towards uh, probably a Scythe. Jonas pretty close to his BKB. He has the two core items, about 500 off the recipe. So some things are coming together for uh, Papa John's here. Papa LeJohns. Still just not enough, though. The gold lead just continues to go the way of BBC, and now they'll smoke up. They'll get aggressive. Slark gets caught out. Takes a stun even inside of the Shadow Dance. They're going to converge on him, but now the cavalry has arrived. He gets mecked up. Slark will be able to pounce. Almost lives, but Jonas comes out with the Chronosphere. Mystic Flare gets split, and Era taking a lot of damage. Will get swapped. He'll be the second to go down on the dire side. Now Mini off to the side. He'll try to TP home, but Undying won't let that happen. Quicks goes down, and it's just the Faceless Void that makes it out. Triple kill for Hockey. And this Razor, he is just destroying folks. He's melting faces. Now we'll look at the team fight recap. 2,400 gold, a one for four trade, and we could be near the end here. That's an E blade out on the support Wraith or Skywrath. No, gl our Glyph is available, so they'll start chipping at the tier three. Razor doesn't have his ultimate up, and Lions will be respawning pretty soon here. Looking at the buyback status. That's just a big negative there, Chief. No buybacks Dyer's available. Structures are fortified. Take us. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So Glyph is used. Tier 3 tower taking a lot of damage. Uh, the Moonlight Shadow comes Dyer's out also, but it doesn't look like it'll be enough fallen. to save the Barracks. Two will still be in the grave for another 10 seconds. Barracks will go down. Jonas has an ultimate in 10 seconds. But Dyer's they're forced just to watch their Barracks fall, and BBC sound the retreat. And that's it. They live. They get away with that. Nothing comes out of it. So Lions, they are in big trouble now. We've been saying that, or I've been saying that for the past couple minutes, but 12,000 gold, 20,000 experience, and a lane of barracks down. What's the recovery mechanism? Ember Spirit has a Battle Fury. Sure, he can farm pretty hard, but this Mantis style, I don't know if it's enough. It's a really nice tool to deal with the silence, but it's just not the same as like a, a double Battle Fury crit. Even if it's not a Daedalus, just a Crystalis. It makes it so hard to push up to the high ground. You just got to find the right angle to uh, initiate. I just feel like they don't have enough to deal with this Slark. W33 is 
so elusive and so tanky. They had to commit so much just to bring him down in that last fight. Undying, he'll get caught out, but again, the cavalry has arrived. They may lose the Undying to start off the fight. He survives longer than expected. It'll cost them their Ember Spirit right away. As the Mystic Flare flies through, swap for Mini won't be enough to keep him alive. My nuts caught inside of the pounce. Another one for three trade. A disastrous situation for Team Lions. Someone, oh my god, it's just, the Lion Tamers have arrived, folks, BBC. They know what they need to do, and they've done it well. Team fight recap, another one, three, three, seven. Gold change in their favor, look at that. What a perfect time for the one, three, three, seven to fly through. No glyph available to go right into the base, and they take out a tier two. They can go into the high ground, and there's no buybacks here. Era doesn't have it. My nuts doesn't have it. It's this is Dyer's well. My nuts does have it, but what's fallen. he gonna do? This is a second lane of barons. Dyer's this is basically game right attack. here. Lions will hang around a little bit Dyer's longer. They'll fallen. try their luck, and in a game like this, where so much is on the line, and the loser goes out empty-handed, and you lose fallen. nothing by hanging around a bit longer, tower is under hoping that the rubber band man will come in and give you a chance of recovery. Jonas uses his BKB in the mid, goes blow for blow Radiant's with the Slark. He's actually going blow for blow with the tower. One HP left on it. Oh, Jonas, that is such a sad story. Sticks around to try and finish off the tower. One HP, and Slark just denies it right in front of him as he TPs home. That right there sums up the state of this game for Lions. One HP deny. Radiance top oh. tower is under attack. Mini on the high ground. They're looking at this Slark. He's got his Shadow Blade on. There is a Sentry Ward down. They're pinging it out like crazy. Lions are one bad team fight away from losing this game. Look at this. He just comes up on the high ground. I've got a gem, boys. I'm going to whip him down. Giving him the whips. Come on, hockey. Whip him. All right, here we go. They're cleaning up the summons. BBC just having some fun with it at this point. 15,000 gold, 25,000 experience. BBC. British Broadcasting Company coming in here. Slark moving into an MKB or a Basher. Probably the Basher. That's a little more fun. Razor, he's got his BKB now. 10 seconds of fresh magic immunity. Solitude. We talked about his E-Blade. He's already got another 2,700 gold. Padrino, what are you working on there, pal? 3,700 gold up on it. They're not even buying items. That's how much fun they're having. They're just like, ah, items. We've got to just, let's just do it. Let's just run in there and see what we can do, guys. Let's make it happen. You and the captain. Scythe of Ice out on the Invoker. This could well be the last fight. Still no glyph for the dire side. There's no time to waste. Razor just goes up on the high ground. Assault Karas chunking it down as his ultimate. It's a lightning storm. Watch out. Oh, oh. oh, no. Mini, he swaps him right out of the Sunstrike. Now Jonas uses his BKB, but he's getting penetrated. He's getting he's getting hurt. Oh, no. Vengeful Spirit around the backside. He's in some trouble. Jonas gets off the ultimate, but there's just no follow-up. He's forced to run away, and I'm not sure how successful that'll be. A couple fights breaking out here at once, but it's the dire side. They're on the back foot. They're getting cleaned up. BBC. They're going to do it. LeJohn's to fall. GG well played is called. And BBC, the phallic imagery, will move on to the Summit 2 by G2A.com European Division. They'll join the big boys in the group stage, and they have done it. After a nail-biting back-and-forth series, it is BBC that comes out victorious with just some superior movements around the map. W33, what a player. His Meepo in Game 2 securing the win, and here is Slark looking damn good. His score is only 7, 5, and 9, but he was moving around that map, creating so much space for his team. Wow. What a series. It's been an absolute pleasure, folks. I'm Zayori, slated to solo cast today, and we're moving into the main event. For Summit EU coming up next, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Zayori TV, at Beyond the Summit to stay up to date with all things Summit related. And y'all may want to hang, uh, hang around here. We're going to have a break, but we got some fun activities coming up on the stream today after this. It'll probably be a little 10, 15, 20 minute break, something like that. But you may want to be hanging around or go have yourself some dinner and come on back because we got a little surprise for you guys coming up.